Welcome to the Marketing Online Student Panel here at SOM. My name is Stephanie Hafner. I am career coach here at the CDO, otherwise known as the Career Development Office. And thanks so much for joining us today. I'm really excited to be able to cover marketing um, personally because that's my background and that's what my career is in. Um, but I've also worked with these wonderful second years here next to me um, in helping shape their, their careers in marketing while they're, they've been here at SOM. So today I'll be moderating a panel of second years who have focused their career in marketing marketing and continue to do so uh, post SOM. Um, and we'll hear about their experiences academically at, at SOM as well as professionally um, and how they've been able to navigate their search and how SOM has helped them. Um, before we get into the heart of our conversation with these wonderful folks, um, just a quick overview on the CDO. So as I mentioned, I am a career coach at the CDO, which is about half of our team. We have about 20 people um, staffed within the CDO. And generally, we are set up to help any student across any industry. So whether that be in banking or consulting, the more traditional paths, or if you're looking at nonprofits and NGOs or impact investing, um, we're set up as career coaches to be generalists and so um, can help you across any discipline that you're interested in. We also work across all populations of MAMs, uh, MBAs, GBS, Silver Scholars, so we cover the whole gamut there. Um, and the other side of the house, if you will, is the employer partnership team. And their very important job is to strengthen and maintain relationships that we have with recruiters and employers here at SOM. Um, and more importantly, develop new ones that we don't have um, and make sure that the SOM population is top of mind for all employers and recruiters. Um, so that's a quick skinny on the, at the CDO. Essentially, we're set up to s serve all types of students of all populations. Um, across any employer and on, across any discipline. So um, that's just a quick overview of the CDO and now we will get into the panel. I'm gonna open up the panel with a couple of questions. We'll ask the panelists to introduce themselves, give a little bit of background of what they've done before SOM and kind of what they did over the summer since they just got back from their summer internships. Um, and then I'll open it up with a few questions to get us started, um, but also just wanted to let you know we are moderating the questions that are coming in online, so don't be shy and please submit your questions. There's somebody moderating them behind the scenes, um, and I will take a look at them and answer them as I get them. So please, um, as they pop into your mind, please do uh, submit your questions that you have. Um, so I'm just going to start, uh, Emily, if you will kick us off here. Um, if you could just introduce yourself, your name, what you did before SOM, um, what you were hoping when you were planning and applying to SOM to get out of um, you know, coming to business school here, and then um, in your case, the internships, the two internships that you did while you were here. Yeah, sure. Thanks. Uh, so my name is Emily Auerbach. I am a third year joint degree student between the School of Forestry and the School of Management here. Um, before school, I worked in the nonprofit space working on food and sustainability. So first uh, as an edible landscaper and urban farmer, and then working with chocolate and cocoa companies on sustainability strategy. Um, so I was very much a career switcher coming in. When I joined uh, Yale, I was really looking to go into the corporate social responsibility or CSR space, be a sustainability officer within a food company. And then I fell in love with brand management and have been pursuing that ever since. So I spent my first summer internship with Pepperidge Farm, maker of uh, such delicious snacks as Milano's and Goldfish. Um, I spent my second summer with Danone North America, which is the world's largest provider of plant-based alternatives, including brands such as Silk and So Delicious. Um, and after graduation, I'll be going to General Mills, which is one of the largest food and beverage companies in the world. Fantastic. Thank you. Yeah. Abby? Yeah. Hi, I'm Abby Loesch. Um, I'm a second year MBA. Um, and before coming to SOM, I worked at um, a foundation in the Bay Area where we did marketing consulting for nonprofits. Um, and it was a really great experience. I really enjoyed my time there. But after a couple of years, I sort of took a look around and thought about the people that I most enjoyed working with and who I most respected and realized that they were all people who had spent many years in the private sector. And so I decided to come to business school to make a transition into the private sector. 
Um, and sort of coming from the nonprofit space, uh, impact was really important to me. And um, tech as an industry felt like, you know, a place where there was a lot of impact. And so I was really drawn to uh, marketing and tech. And so that was my intention in coming to, to business school. And um, I'm sort of unique in that I didn't change my mind once I got here. I actually <laughs> stuck with that. Um, and I ended up uh, interning in product marketing at Atlassian over the summer. Um, Atlassian is an uh, enterprise software company, so they make um, Jira, Confluence, and Trello. Great. Thanks, Abby. Irene? Hi, everyone. Uh, nice to meet you, and thanks for joining us. My name is Irene Koo. I'm also a second-year MBA student. Before SOM, I worked in nonprofit fundraising in New York City, primarily at art museums and arts and culture institutions. Uh, like Emily and Abby, I also came to business school looking for a career transition. I was craving for that private sector experience and exposure, and I saw that a lot of leaders in the nonprofit space had MBAs, so that's what my goals were coming into school. Uh, my plan of attack coming to school was explore first. Uh, I didn't have my mindset on something, but I once on campus during orientation, I discovered marketing, spoke to a lot of alumni, and also fell in love with brand management. So uh, over the summer, I interned at Procter & Gamble P&G in Cincinnati on the hair care team. I didn't think I would spend as much time thinking about hair care, but I loved it. <laughs> Great. And Angie? Hi, everyone. My name is Angie. Um, I'm also a second year MBA here at SOM. Um, prior to coming to school, I worked in the tech space, um, first at uh, Google and then at Pinterest on the sales side. And my motivation for coming to school functionally was to pivot, uh, while staying in tech, was to pivot roles into marketing. Um, and so I had a very tailored or very specific strategy during my recruiting process. Um, I wanted to pursue product marketing within tech, specifically for B2B. Um, and that's what I did this summer. I did product marketing at Spotify. Fantastic. Thank you. You guys have such varied and interesting experiences and a lot of career switchers, which is really great. So for those that are watching today, if you are a career switcher, what are some of the things at SOM, and maybe I will start with Abby and Irene here, that um, have been really helpful for you in terms of making that career switch? Some of the resources here, um, classes, projects, organizations, um, Treks, um, and then I'll start with you guys because you are the marketing club leaders this year. Um, so maybe you want to start with that, and then add anything else you 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 know had, that has been helpful in your path. Yeah, definitely. So uh, yes, we are the marketing club leaders. So we're definitely going to talk about how helpful marketing club is. <laughs> yeah. We're going to market the marketing club. Yeah. <laughs> um, but definitely, um, marketing club was a huge resource to me mm -hmm. um, in my first year here at SOM. I think that um, I leaned really heavily on. Um, the marketing club leaders and the, the marketing club curriculum when I was um, going through recruiting. So sort of like the first semester um, here at school, marketing club focuses on, um, you know, preparing people for interviews. So, um, you know, reviewing resumes, looking at cover letters, uh, helping people practice behaviorals and casing and things like that. So uh, we provide a lot of support, and I think for me it was super helpful last year, and it's one of the reasons why I wanted to become a marketing club leader this year. Yeah, to echo Abby, I stepped onto campus not really knowing even what marketing fully entails, so those of you who are joining us today, you're right ahead of the game, <laughs> um, and marketing club really opened my eyes to how strategic a role it can be, all that entails, so I would say the club members and leaders kind of held my hand throughout the entire process, so that was a really important resource for me. Another pool of resource, I would say, is the alumni network at SOM. What helped me transition from the nonprofit to marketing or brand management was at SOM, I was able to find a large cohort of alumni who similar who made that similar transition. So I was very intentional about reaching out to former SOM students who come from the nonprofit or arts and culture space who are now in the private sector marketing roles and asking them, them about their motivations for making that transition um, what they're hoping to learn, and if they're actually learning from that experience, what they hope to gain. Great. Um, and maybe, Emily, you could talk a little bit about conferences and any other experiences that have been helpful for you. I know Ramba, reaching out MBA, has been helpful. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yeah. Uh, so I would say that conferences have been a huge part of my recruiting strategy as a career switcher. Um, 
particularly because I knew coming in that I was laser focused on food and beverage. Mm -hmm. And uh, there's just not that many food and beverage companies. So you really have to be working pretty hard to get exposure to them uh, if that's the specific industry that you're targeting. So the two major conferences that were helpful to me uh, or Trex are Ramba and Embark. So Ramba or Reaching Out MBA is the world's largest gathering of LGBTQ plus MBA students. And it's both a conference around LGBTQ issues in the workplace, uh, featuring inspirational LGBTQ professionals as speakers, and a recruiting mecca. Um, so Ramba is an absolutely insane enterprise where hundreds of companies appear and spend a weekend interviewing and giving offers on the spot to LGBTQ MBA students mm -hmm. from across the world. And if I can just echo that, I was just there for the second time this year, thanks to Emily. Um, there were 2,000 attendees, oh which was amazing. And we also got to listen to James Robertson, who is the founder of Ramba, who is an SOM alum as well. So a lot yeah. of support all around. Lots of support. Um, and as an LGBTQ individual, it was really important to me to have access to a recruiting pipeline where I knew my interviewers would be members of the LGBTQ community. I could ask questions about uh, same-sex partner healthcare coverage and mm -hmm. adoption coverage and workplace dynamics, when how free you feel to be out in the workplace. Um, so it was really important to me both for the company exposure and then also just for my sort of personal safety and happiness. Mm -hmm. Um, another really critical Trek resource that I used was Embark, which is another program founded by an SOM alum named Joe DeBro, mm -hmm. uh, who used to work with Whole Foods and Sprouts and is now sort of a titan of the natural foods industry. And it brings MBA students from across the US to two natural product expos, one on the East Coast in the fall uh, and the West Coast in the spring to meet with natural food industry leaders and hear a little bit more about what the big trends are shaping the food industry. Fantastic. What has been helpful for you, Angie? Yeah, well, echoing some of Irene's sentiments about having a just wonderful alumni network um, here to support you, I also found that the second year base when I was mm -hmm. a first year was incredible. Mm -hmm. um, we had had um, a, a, like a several different people actually at uh, Spotify doing the exact role that I wanted to do in previous years, so they were an amazing resource. Um, there were so many people that worked within uh, product marketing and also just marketing in general that I felt like I had every resource at my disposal, um, whether it was helping me prepare for an interview um, or just like bouncing general kind of ideas off of, getting some of their insights into what they did this summer and what they thought helped them make them successful, um, which is a huge, huge uh, resource for me last year. Great. And can we, um, we have a question here that um, asks about the recruiting for marketing. Does it take place on campus um, and which companies come to recruit here? It'd be interesting to hear you, how you landed um, Spotify and what your recruiting experience was here. Just before you do that, maybe just a little bit of um, background in terms of just giving you some companies that have recently recruited here and that ranges from CPG companies to tech companies to healthcare, um, P&G, PepsiCo, Mattel, L'Oreal, Campbell's, Samsung, Wayfair, Medtronic, Google, Amazon, uh, Facebook, Mattel. Those are just to list a few that come on campus and traditionally recruit with us here at SOM. But it'd be interesting to hear, did you use on campus? Um, how was your experience and how did you land Spotify? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so I think what you'll find with some of the um, the smaller, I mean, the small to medium tech companies mm -hmm. is that they actually don't do on campus recruiting, but they do have very robust like university teams. Mm -hmm. And as a result of that, um, I essentially was able to touch base with the second years who had interned at Spotify previously. Previously, they were able to be that initial resource, but then they were also essentially able to connect me to people at Spotify on those teams that I could then ask um, even more specific questions to start building that network and just really start building, um, yeah, introducing myself and like putting myself in the pipeline essentially. Yeah. Um, yeah. So it was definitely one of those things where I think some people think of like the like less formal recruiting as a little bit more daunting, but mm -hmm. I didn't find it to be that way 
at all. Mm -hmm. um, just again, given the depth of expertise that we have both within the walls of SOM and within the alumni base. Great, and Abby, if I could ask you to also talk about your experience um, and how you landed in that last scene, and then I'll ask Irene and Emily how you landed your jobs. Yeah, so uh, totally agree with Angie that the the small to, to mid-sized tech companies, um, they just don't do any kind of on-campus mm -hmm. recruiting. It's not, it's not just SOM. Um, and so uh, if you're interested in one of those companies, you're going to have to um, reach out to them yourselves. Mm -hmm. And so I, I did do some of the on-campus recruiting, but yeah. I was ultimately a little bit more interested in like some of the smaller tech companies. And mm -hmm. so, um, yeah, I think it can seem a little daunting because definitely like you have to do a little bit more reaching out. Yeah. Um, but if you do that, if you talk to um, alumni or um, second years or even just like your personal uh, base, because you might have some people there too, um, it it makes it a lot easier actually. Mm -hmm. It's not, it, it's definitely doable. So it really just depends kind of where you're targeting and how they kind of recruit and interact with business schools. For example, Irene, P&G traditionally comes on campus every year right. to recruit. Can you talk a little bit about your experience? Yeah, so what I was looking for in, in my internship experience was as a career searcher, I wanted that big company experience, so to speak, and those that, um, to maximize my learning, I was looking for internship programs that had a lot of structure and resources behind them, and those tended to be the larger companies that are used to and actively rely on business school mm -hmm. on-campus recruiting. So um, P&G is a long-standing employer um, or an employer with long-standing relations with SOM, mm -hmm. so I engaged with them multiple points during the fall um, and was able to end up there for my internship. Yep. And Emily? Yeah. It'd be um, helpful to hear your story. It's a very unique one. Right. Uh, so I sort of have, I've, I've recruited for marketing three times now, so I have three <laughs> separate recruiting stories. Um, the first time around for Pepperidge was on-campus recruiting. Mm -hmm. Pepperidge is now a subdivision under Campbell's Snacks, so mm -hmm. they now come to campus under Campbell's. Um, so they posted their position on our sort of online job board. I reached out to an alumni who was working there, uh, had a pre-interview with her where she sort of prepped me for the process, uh, did an on-campus interview, very traditional on-campus recruiting pathway. Mm -hmm. For my second internship with Danone, uh, I got recruited through Ramba, that LGBTQ MBA conference, mm -hmm. um, and was pretty much given a job offer on the spot, which is how Ramba works, which mm -hmm. is absolutely insane. Um, and then for this most recent go around for full time, um, General Mills actually reached out to me because I had met them at Ramba last year and they had given me a job offer on the spot, which I declined. Uh, and they sort of came back mm -hmm. this year mm -hmm. to re-recruit. Great. So generally, I think the, the takeaway is, is there's lots of different ways in which you can approach. Um, you can certainly leverage on-campus recruit, recruiting that we have here at SOM, but the network is also very, very important in terms of alums and second years being able to help as well as conferences. So it's kind of a, a mix. It's different in, in the sense that, um, you know, versus private equity or maybe media and entertainment where that's more heavily um, networking focused. I think marketing is kind of a good balance between offer opportunities that you can get through on campus, but as well as networking. Um, we do have a question here around talking about classes. Um, can you talk about how you've used some of your classes outside of SOM? Did you take any courses at the School of Art or a different school outside? Because I know that you can take any class here at Yale, across Yale. Um, what has been helpful or useful for marketing? And I'll let any of you take that. Uh, I'll start. Yeah. Um, I, my my answer is a little biased because I'm a joint degree. <laughs> so yeah. I've taken a lot of classes outside of SOM. Yeah. Um, but the data visualization class over from the Yale program on climate change communication huh. is really fantastic. You get a chance to learn about uh, the ways that you can take huge amounts of data and synthesize them into something super visually compelling and intuitive, which is a huge part of what we do in marketing. So that has been a really helpful class for me outside. Great. Uh, can we talk about classes inside of Absolutely, yeah, because absolutely. I, I think probably the, the single most helpful and most important class 
um, at SOM for marketing and to pre prepare you for marketing roles is uh, YCCI Discovery Projects, which, mm -hmm. which we all second. Yes. Recommendation. <laughs> um, yeah. Uh, so YCCI is Yale Center for Customer Insights. Um, they sort of act as like our marketing department, um, and they have a lot of connections with um, uh, private companies, and so they they work with these companies to uh, develop consulting, marketing consulting projects that um, students can work on. And so every semester, there are four different, it's four, right? Mm -hmm. Four different consulting projects that students can be a part of. Um, and you work on them, you apply to, to be a part of it, and you work on them in teams of five. Um, and so you're sort of given this um, uh, prompt and you work on it the entire semester and you um, you know bring your recommendations to the client at the end of the semester I think that um, most people who did YCCI and then did a marketing internship afterwards said yeah wow that was exactly what I did in my internship mm -hmm. um, it like pretty much sets you up for um, a marketing internship you know just really well I awesome. think it's a great resource who was your client oh sorry mine was MasterCard oh and who and, he's and I worked with PepsiCo on communicating sustainability around recycled plastic. Very interesting. Yeah. Classes that were helpful uh, yeah. for you guys? My equivalent of classes are just all of the lectures and talks oh, that yeah. happen ad hoc throughout the university. Good point. So without enrolling in a formal class, so I got to listen to the brand officer at Spotify who gave a, ses who gave a session on marketing, mm -hmm. uh, Vincent Stanley, who's title I think is the coolest, Director of Philosophy at Patagonia, yeah. he led a workshop on marketing for cause-based uh, startups or organizations. So yeah. um, there's so much to, so many cool talks and lectures to attend throughout the university that can supplement your interest in marketing or any industry or field really. Yeah. Yeah, and so definitely echoing everything that's already been said, but I think to round us out, um, one of the classes here at SOM that I'm really excited for in the spring is um, strategic marketing leadership, um, the role of the chief marketing officer. Um, and so it's led by one of our faculty here, but essentially every week they bring in a CMO from across the industry, um, and you get to just hear from their experiences how they were able to build global brands or um, focus more on like customer acquisition strategy, everything that basically runs the gamut. Um, and it's something that I think is so awesome because you have that in like classroom piece, but it's also you get to bring in practical application from the field. Um, and it's something that I just, I think is going to be one of the most valuable, valuable classes here. That's exciting. And yeah. If I can, I'm just going to yeah, quickly please. run through all the other SOM marketing courses <laughs> just to like yeah. get Great. a sense of what the options yeah. are. Thank you. Emily. So during the core, you'll take customer, uh, which is basically marketing 101. It teaches you everything that you need to know in order to ace your marketing interviews. Um, after that, we have uh, strategic market management. We have survey design, managing marketing programs, marketing strategy. Any of the other big ones that I missed? No, I don't think so. Yeah, no, I think that's it. Yeah, so there's, oh, there's actually, a lot of opportunities. Um, you said survey design, there's like, <laughs> Consumer psychology or like mm. consumer behavior, consumer big data. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So lots of lots of lots of different classes and resources to help you set set yourself up for success in the summer. One of the questions that um, we have from the panel is um, how intensive is the recruiting process for marketing? How do you balance that with academics? Can you talk a little bit about that? Anybody want to take that? I know it's there's so much going on too. The the great thing about SOM is there's so many exciting things going on that it's almost hard to choose what you want to engage in. So there's there's great talks as I, Irene mentioned, lots of different leaders in different areas that come to SOM. Um, so it's actually hard to choose what you want to do at lunchtime sometimes. Yeah. Um, but how do can you talk a little bit about how you balance all of that with all these exciting things to do um, with recruiting? Anybody want to take that? Yeah, I mean, I think it's yeah. the classic kind of business school, you know, like question of how, like, how do you balance everything? Yeah. Um, and I think for me, one thing that has been really been a saving grace, because as you mentioned, there are just so many different things going on at one time, is just really sitting down with the CDO, with different mentors across the school and prioritizing kind of how I want to spend my time. Yep. Um, and so obviously with recruiting being a big piece of that, I can basically plan out, let's say like my week, my month, my quarter with all of the different recruiting events mm -hmm. and then have, um, you know, like the classes that I want to take kind of work around that or vice versa. Um, yeah. So I think just 
just having basically people that have, again, like the second years that have kind of done it before um, as like a guiding light almost just makes the entire thing um, so much more, so much more, um, I think, digestible and even fun. Because once you get the hang of it, you're like, okay, like, wow, like, look at all these things that I've been able to accomplish and how productive I've been in this last week. Like, that's like an incredible skill that I think I've learned here at business school and one that's going to help me like for years to come. Mm -hmm. Great. I, I, yeah, I have something to add to that. I think in terms of like how intense is marketing recruiting, it's not, it's not like finance recruiting. <laughs> um, so you're, you're not like doing, you know, four coffee chats a day or whatever. And, and the thing about like finance recruiting is that it's super intense for a really short period of time. Um, and I think for me at least, and I think this is probably true for most tech recruiting, it wasn't like it wasn't a sprint like finance recruiting is, it was a marathon. Yep. So um, it takes place, it really, I was doing recruiting the entire year um, and I didn't I didn't accept my offer until April actually. Yeah. Um, so, it, and I mean, it really depends because marketing is a function, not an industry. It depends mm -hmm. on what industry you're looking at for marketing. Mm -hmm. um, and at least for tech and especially for smaller or mid-sized companies, like it can be, a really long process yeah. so just you know being ready for the marathon is important that's really good to, to note uh, I guess the other perspective my recruiting experience because I was so focused on opportunities that had a lot of pretty predictable structure behind them I was very like going in I was fully aware okay resume uh, deadlines are going to be concentrated around this period interviews might be coming out for this period so having kind of a clear, being able to anticipate when those high points are really helped me plan and kind of mentally prepare myself. Yeah. And also just uh, less on the balancing and more, how did you get through all of this? I think what really helped me is a community of people around me. So Marketing Club, another plug, uh, they put together recruiting prep teams. That's both tactical um, practice, but also just emotional support. Hey, we know we have a big push coming up, so can we practice together? Um, did you are you aware of this deadline coming up? So having kind of an accountability buddy system helped mm -hmm. me get through uh, the recruiting process. Fantastic. We do have a question here that says, um, does most of the recruiting take place on campus? So there's a number of um, companies that um, consistently come to campus. Some of them, such as PepsiCo, P and G, Google, is the, the ones that I mentioned. Facebook. Um, and Amazon, um, those are just a few to mention. What, can you just list a couple of companies that you recruited with here on campus, just you know, from your experience? Kraft Heinz. Okay, great. Any um, other? Yeah, I mean, like, uh, I think, well, yeah, it's sort of like what what do you define as on campus? But yes, there's a, yeah, and that's a really good point because that could be whether or not they got they either come here on campus to actually do interviewing or coffee chats, or they could be posted um, through the SOM CDO portal. Um, so they are actually posting with a SOM, but not are physically not here. So I would include all of that where it was an opportunity through SOM. Yeah, uh, Amazon. Yeah. Any other? Yeah, rounding out the tech piece, um, Facebook and Google yep. were two of the companies that I recruited with. Um, yeah. Okay, great. Um, so in terms of, let's g keep going on kind of your SOM experience beyond academics. Can you talk a little bit about the SOM culture and what makes it special for you? Well, I love this question. <laughs> um, Go for it, Emily. So I, I think the SOM culture is extremely special. Yeah. Um, I only applied to two business schools, which is pretty unusual. Um, I definitely wanted to make sure I was going to a business school that represented my values and my ideals. As a joint degree, I care a great deal about sustainability and environmental responsibility. And I wanted to make sure I was going to a school where social impact was really placed at a premium. Mm -hmm. um, and I think that, social, that SOM has that in spades. Yeah. What that means in terms of the day-to-day -day culture experience is that I think it's a lot more collaborative and supportive uh, than what I had sort of feared I would encounter at a business school. Yeah. Um, so my favorite example of this is that the day before my final round interview for Pepridge, one of the other students who had also been invited for a final round reached out to me and said, hey, can we mock interview together and give each other feedback? Wow. And we sat down and prepped each other for our competing interviews the next day to make sure that we'd both be at our best. 
uh, which is not really what I think of when I think business school culture. But, but it's it definitely a, SOM culture. Which is highly collaborative yeah. and supportive. Um, and you answered actually another question, so if we could tie both of them in, is why did you choose SOM, especially going into marketing? What was kind of your thought process of how you selected SOM as the right school for you, and then what, does it, what makes it special for you? Uh, Abby, yeah. do you want to go next? Um, yeah, sure. So I think for me, um, actually very similar to, mm -hmm. to your response. Um, I, you know, I came from the nonprofit world. And so um, I did want to be at a place where um, sort of like impact was and social impact was going to be important to people. Mm -hmm. And that was uh, that was something that I found at SOM. Not only that, but because I was coming from, you know, sort of like I had this non-traditional background for business schools. Um, I just wanted to be in a classroom where there were um, people from lots of different backgrounds. I, I didn't want to be in a classroom where it was like all consultants and mm -hmm. bankers. Um, and that's totally not true of SOM. People just come from all over, which is, I mean, we happen to mostly come from nonprofits, but, <laughs> but people come that's from true. all over, yeah. I promise. <laughs> and, and then secondly, I think uh, just like the culture um, and the people, I really, I really liked the culture here. It just... Um, it felt like the right fit. And I think that like, it's hard. I, I think it's if you can visit the school and sort of like get a sense for that, that's the best way to do it. Because in my experience, when I was um, sort of researching business schools, they kind of all say that they're collaborative um, and that they're warm and welcoming. But like, you had to actually go there to really get a sense for um, what the culture was like and whether it was a good fit. But I think fit is just a really important thing to look for. Yeah, good point. Um, also, mission wor was most important to yeah. me. The and society part of SOM's mission really resonated with me. Um, I didn't have a specific career transition plan in specifically into marketing, but wanted to just be in a supportive community and community not just uh, for the two years that I'm on campus, but long term. What's a community of alumni that I'll be joining? And I had the opportunity to join, uh, talk to a lot of different alumni during my application process. And I thought, yeah, these are the kind of people that I want to stay in touch with and be a part of. Mm -hmm. um, so. That, that was it in terms of culture, but also tactic or logistically, I wanted to be in a smaller school, so mm -hmm. 350 per class seemed right to me. I'm originally from outside Boston, but after 10 years in New York, I really wanted to be back in New England proper. Uh, so those kind of visceral, like experiential things also really helped me, and that was reinforced when I visited on campus. Like Abby said, like when I stepped on campus, I was like, oh, yeah. I can see myself. This feels like home. Yes. Awesome. Yeah, and I think this has been mentioned across the board, but just to reiterate the people, um, and I think because it's worth calling out, um, I had done a lot of research before um, deciding what business school I went to. Um, I talked to pretty much everyone that I could get to talk to me. Um, I came on campus, um, and I really, really found that the people here at SOM are just so special and unique and just different in so many ways. Um, and so I had had a few friends that had graduated from here and they basically, you could tell they were so excited that I was thinking about coming to SOM and they did everything they could um, to just kind of just like help me see how amazing this place was. And mm -hmm. I think that to me just said so much. Mm -hmm. um, and then coming on campus, I think the atmosphere here is just like someone mentioned, like so welcoming and so warm. Everyone here is welcome to stop what they're doing, go out of their way to help you. Um, and yeah, I feel like within our class and within the school, um, everyone here, I've almost been blown away just by how obviously smart, talented, accomplished everyone is, but how just down to earth, like funny, and just really just cool. Like mm -hmm. people that you know that you're not <laughs> gonna meet in this kind of capacity anywhere else. Yeah. Because I think you can go anywhere else and find so many smart, talented people, but having that extra just like, I don't even know what to call it. Like I've personally been blown away by it. Um, yeah, and I'm just so grateful. Yeah. Awesome. Um, for the alumni, to, you know, um, outreach and your conversations with alumni, I'm sure that this is echoed in terms of your experience with that. Can any of you talk about, you know, your conversations with alumni, how uh, open to the, it they are, how accessible they are? Can any of you, anybody want to talk through our alumni? Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. God, I used to be very passionate about. Oh. Okay. Yes, yes. Irene, you mentioned uh, our alumni. Yeah, I've reached out to a lot of. I like getting advice and <laughs> um, getting experience, perspective. So I have reached out to a lot of alumni, SOM alumni, and 
they're, they, one, they always respond mm -hmm. super quickly, it's probably qu quicker than I can respond to them. Um, and then one special experience that I had with an alumni was through the Women in Management uh -huh. Club, actually. They, over the summer, they set up a formal mentor, mentor, yeah, mentorship program where they pair you with an alumni. So I had, I was connected with an, a leader in the arts and culture space, and she and I set up a bi-weekly call throughout the summer, and we've formed a long-standing relationship to go, going forward. So I really appreciate how uh, generous the alumni are with their time and advice and the, the, the solid relationships that I'm able to form. Great. Yeah, and I would just say, um, in addition to that, I think one thing I've noticed being um, a club leader, which I'm sure you've all noticed as well, is that we have alumni reaching out to us on a very regular basis. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, and so, for instance, um, I'm helping plan or lead um, one of the job track efforts this year, and we have alumni from all over SF and New York just reaching out to be like, hey, like, we know the job track's in January because we did it a few years ago. Like, how can we help? Uh -huh. um, and I think I was, yeah, again, just kind of, like, shocked by how engaged everyone still was and, like, yeah. wanting to set up calls and like wanting to come on campus and like talk about their companies. Um, yeah, so it, yeah. even that like kind of proactive outreach from alumni I yeah. think is really special. Yeah, I think that's echoed across from all the students that I've worked with that um, they've gotten really great alumni uh, reception and that they're open to networking calls and informational calls um, and even to the broader, they're surprised at how um, well networked and how um, powerful the, the um, community is beyond SOM into the Yale alumni database. So it's it's a huge it's been a huge resource for a number of our students. Um, continuing around, like how you um, chose SOM. One question that we have here is, what is it like living here in New Haven? And maybe contrasting that to maybe a school that you might have chosen um, that was based in like kind of a larger city versus like New York City or or San Francisco. Yeah, I think that um, I think that what's great about being in New Haven as opposed to a larger city is that um, if you're in a larger city, people are going to probably have friends from outside of business school that live in that larger city, mm -hmm. and they can definitely just go and hang out with those people, right? And so. Um, you're not sort of like forced to <laughs> spend time with each other, which I mean, it sounds, that's maybe not the right word to use, but it's like, <laughs> it is great being in a smaller city because, you know, you you have a lot of face time with the people that you go to school with. And after all, I mean, part of the reason why you come to business school is to make connections with people. And so just like being in a slightly smaller city where you know that you're gonna spend a lot of time with people, I think is is really great. Yeah. Yeah, and just completely going off of that, um, yeah. anecdotally, I this summer I was able to intern with MBA students from a bunch of different schools, um, mm -hmm. some of those being in bigger metropolitan areas. Um, and I and during lunch one day I was talking to one of them and you know, like just talking about everyone that I had in my network here and how much I loved everyone and just how how I felt like I had formed these really close bonds. Um, and they essentially were like, you know, like obviously I really love everyone at my business school too, but going to school in this big city, I find that I spend so much time outside of the community, exactly what Abby was saying, mm -hmm. um, and that, you know, like I live like five miles from campus, so I spend a lot of time with my friends that I had had here, and people will kind of do the same. I mean, he was like, as meant as like as great as, as it is and as amazing it is, as it is, like he was like, I almost kind of wish I had had that sense of just like being in one community. Mm -hmm. um, so th I just thought that was funny because I think that's something that I'd always been like, oh yeah, I, I, like I think that's how it is, but it, like talking to this person, it kind of became illuminated. That's it's true. Mm -hmm. um, and then even speaking with my friends like from back home, they're all like, wow, like I feel like you've formed these close group of friends so quickly like how were you able to do this and I was like it's because we're in this community that like sure we can hop on a train and go to New York and be there in like two hours mm -hmm. but we all are just here hanging out with each other and we're able to form these bonds like so so quickly one other thing Great. that I'll add to that yeah. is that I knew that I wanted to be investing really heavily in my experience in grad school and so I didn't want like the one time in my life that I live in New York or San Francisco to be while I was doing this super intensive experience that I wanted to be really all in on. Yep. Um, so I have appreciated that although New Haven does have things to do, it's not like every time I go to an SOM event, I'm like, oh no, this could have been the one time in my life I go and get a day of ticket on Broadway. 
Like, I'd, I'm happy to be at SFOA. It's a, good, it's a good place to be spending your time. Yeah. And maybe I can add um, my personal experience. I went to undergrad in New York, and mm -hmm. I lived there for six years. So I spent a decade in New York, and I was very much looking for that immersive experience, like Emily was saying. I went to li live it and breathe this whole business school thing. Mm -hmm. And when I was considering schools, of course, my existing, my existing life was in New York, but I caught myself thinking, oh, if I go to business school um, in New York or maybe every other city, I was find imagining how to fit business school into my existing life, and I realized I didn't want that to be the case. So yeah. I love um, deliberately and intentionally choosing to be in New Haven with other people who were kind of all in on this. Great. Um, so now I wanted to, uh, t I have a question here that says, um, how did you know that you wanted to go into marketing? And I think that's a great question. Um, it's interesting because I work with a lot of students who are interested in a number of things, and it's hard not to be drawn towards consulting, for example, or you know, uh, tech also, you know, and there's a lot of also um, intersections as well. Um, how did you know you wanted to go into marketing? For me, I can actually speak to that. Um, I was really drawn by the fact that it was highly strategic, um, yet at the same time had the fun aspect of being creative as well. And that was what the combination of those two things was really what attracted me. What attracted you to marketing? Yeah. Um, so I definitely did not think of myself as a marketing person in any way when I came to school and actually resisted joining the marketing club for a while. <laughs> really? Um, because I was like, no, I'm not a marketer. I do sustainability stuff. <laughs> um, and then the more that I was speaking with alumni, with second and third year students, I was like, oh, shoot, the people who I'm really drawn to and the problems I want to solve are the ones I'm hearing from marketing people. What if I'm a marketing person? Um, <laughs> existential crisis. Existential crisis, <laughs> which is all a first year of business school is, is an ongoing <laughs> existential crisis. It's very well structured. Um, so yeah, I think what really turned the tide for me uh, was the fact that I knew I wanted to be in a super collaborative and cross-functional role mm -hmm. um, and that's really the heart of brand management is that you as the brand manager are coordinating across supply chain, consumer insights, sales, packaging, research and development, all of the different functions that contribute to getting a food product onto shelves. You are the person who's taking in all this information and making strategic choices about the direction of your brand based on your understanding of your core consumer. So that sort of uh, intense empathy required to understand the mm -hmm. consumer needs, mm -hmm. the creative aspect of figuring out how to bring that strategy to life, the analytical aspect, and then of course just the constant collaboration and being really the, the hub of the wheel, uh, which is how brand managers like to talk about it, mm -hmm. uh, really, really drew me in. Great. Yeah, I think that um, those were great points that uh, marketing is, I think people forget, and we talk about this a lot in Marketing Club actually, yep. that it is actually strategic and um, it's not just like you sitting around making adver it's not Mad Men, you know, like it's not <laughs> advertising, it, it is really strategic. Um, and so I had done marketing before business school and so I got I had gotten to see that and, and so I just wanted to continue that in the private sector. And then I'll just, I'll add a couple of things yeah. to the reason, a couple of big reasons why I never got pulled into into consulting were that one I wanted um, a work life balance um, <laughs> and I didn't want to be traveling all the time yeah. and I think that that's if you're thinking about consulting it's something you really really need to deeply consider because mm -hmm. like that is your life um, and then two that people who were considering consulting always seemed to to think of consulting as just a temporary thing it's like I'm going to do consulting for a couple of years and then I'll do the rest of my life. And I was like, why don't you just do the rest of your life? Um, so that's kind of why I never got pulled into that. Great. Uh, what drew me to marketing was the hub of the wheel piece for sure. Mm -hmm. um, I liked the strategic part, but also it's equal part strategy and implementation. I really like the bringing to life. I like touching physical products. Like how does a million flavors of Oreos get to the shelves at Walmart. Like I wanted to be part of that and having ownership of that and being so close to the product that you're working with was really got me excited and still gets me excited about marketing. Yep. 
Yeah, exa I mean, exactly the same. Um, I had had a chance to work closely with product marketers at Pinterest and Google prior to coming to SOM. Um, I just loved how, again, strategic their role was and how they were able to influence decisions at both a macro and a micro level. Um, and it's something that I got to see firsthand that I was really interested in and that I wanted to pursue. Great. It sounds like all of you have chosen the right path because you're very passionate about marketing. <laughs> so kudos to you that you found what you love to do. Um, it is getting near time, so I do want to ask the last question for all the panelists. Can each of you give a word of advice to candidates that are preparing to apply? Maybe something that you wish somebody would have told you before applying or that you wish you would have known or just a word of advice now that you've gone through the process, you're in your second year and you're like, I wish I would have known that. Angie, do you want to start with that? Yeah, yeah, I mean, I think starting at even that, like the application level, um, when I was thinking about the schools that I was applying to, I basically decided to take a very tailored and a very like specific strategy based on the schools that I knew I could see myself at. Um, and so I think I applied also same as Emily to a very small number of schools. Um, I found that that strategy actually worked really well for me because I was able to give each application 100% instead of just spreading myself out over over several like tens of applications um, yeah so I really I found that that worked really well for me um, yeah and I just I, I think that's a really just like good way to approach it great Irene um, any last word of advice yeah Abby mentioned this but I highly 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 recommend visiting the school's campuses mm -hmm. I think nothing can replace the experience of being physically in the space and that helps you just envision yourself going to school there and spending two years of your, two important years of your life there. Yep. So that's one piece of advice. And the second is, as you enter this process, I would encourage you to be open-minded. I certainly benefited from it because I just came into think, entered the experience thinking, I wanna explore things that I would have never considered. So be open-minded. Great. Um, I think for your applications and then even for interviews, if those come afterwards, put a stake in the ground and be really specific about what you want to do after business school and think very, very carefully and thoughtfully about why it's necessary for you to go to business school in order to do that and articulate it very well in your application and in your interviews. Um, and, you know, you can change your mind, like as Emily and Irene have shown, and I think it's something like 70% of people end up changing their mind once they get here. But um, if you just think about why you want to come and be really clear about that, I think it's going to, it's really going to set you apart. Yeah. yeah. And I absolutely echo all of this. And we'll just add for SOM specifically, the, like the death knell in your application process is to be generic because as you probably heard throughout this conversation, we really pride ourselves on being a unique business school with unique values and unique approaches. Mm -hmm. And so if at any point in the process it feels like you could have written the same thing for any business school, then it's probably not going to serve you particularly well for the SOM process, which is really looking for people who have fallen in love with what, with the school's kind of unique approach to things. Okay, thank you so much. I really appreciate all of you sharing your experiences and wisdom and advice. And thank you so much for spending the time with us this afternoon. Um, we hope to see you in the future here at the SOM campus. Take care and have a good day.